What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, some interesting news has come out regarding the DC world. James Gunn has tweeted a few things that have gotten some fans upset. Jason Momoa is sparking up. I mean, it, th these are rumors, but we know what it is. And hopefully that's what it is. If it's something else, Brian, I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. W what are your thoughts on that possibility of James Gunn bringing these characters to use him in the DC world? I don't have a problem with it as long as they're casted correctly. Yeah, so I think high level, we're getting late into January. Obviously, James Gunn had said they would do some unveiling in January. I would point out to people, I've been on this earnings call thing all along. I did check, like Warner Brothers did not finalize. Uh, it looks like their earnings call is actually going to be in early February. So would not be shocked if this thing slips by about a week. Uh, and people, I'm sure, will roast James Gunn on his social media accounts for that. But yeah. I, like I said, I think this is a coordinated effort at a company level. It's not just about the creative side. But yeah, let's talk casting. So this all got started because, you know, James Gunn for right now is still wearing another hat. And that's the promotion and post-production of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And he was asked about the cast. And he said, you know, he loves them dearly. <clears throat> and family. And said he, you know, he expects that he'll work with them again. And then he threw in maybe at my new job which would be DC. So, you know, people felt some kind of way about that. So they yeah. came at James Bond and he had a very, I thought, interesting response okay. that I thought was pretty loaded and I'm surprised didn't get picked up and go viral quite the way that I thought it might. James Gunn is a is is listen, he's tackling these things to put like to shut it down pretty much. He's not letting things uh, linger in the air. He's not trying to have these conversations when it's time to get out there to promote this new stuff, Brian. That's not what the focus needs to be on. The focus needs to be on the new stuff that they're doing over there which I think for the most part, a lot of people are, are very much excited. Brian, we, we texted each other today talking about all the stuff that we were talking about DC. Because every time we talk about DC, the clouds will come and rain and hail will come and it would just be a bad day. And now we're singing, not singing his praises, but are certainly excited. That same feeling, Brian, I think I got after seeing Thanos at the end of Avengers. I, that's the feeling I got right now for what's coming. And I think James Gunn is any like negative stuff, anything that they pick, he's shutting it down quick. And I think that's what he should be doing. The Guardians of the Galaxy thing. I can't, like, I'll just, let's take one of, Let's take the most obvious member of the Guardians from this perspective, okay? So Avatar Way of Water just crossed $2 billion of global box office, which means if you're scoring at home, Zoe Saldana has been in four movies that have grossed over $2 billion of box. Like, she's already done franchise filmmaking for 15 years. Like, what, what's the problem here? I, I, it, that's why I think Gunn's point is very simple. It's like, I'm if I'm going to put Zoe Saldana or Dave Batista or Chris even Chris Pratt in a role, I'm not doing it for them to be Peter Quill again, to be Drax again. And he's doing it because he thinks there's a, an alignment between a certain character. And he's, you know, I think some of the Guardians are more suited to that than others. Like, I don't know if Batista would come back after what he said about Drax, but he's somebody that's shown he has range. You know, so he, I could see a role for him in the DCU. Sure. I mean, he's been he's been trying to get Bane for a while. He, he might, I was just about to say that's not listen. Batista as Bane is is perfect. 
it, because of his size, certainly he's getting up there. And if he wants to play him, I think there has to be some talk already happening about that world being built out. Um, if not, then it's, I, I, I don't know, Brian, but uh, he certainly, Chris Pratt, I, this is an opportunity to differentiate himself from the Quill character and, and playing a character that's completely different. I don't see, these are actors, my friends. Listen, like his last comment, whether it was a drive-by on one of or both of The Rock and Henry Cavill, like he's sending a message into the ether of like, yeah, like part of the reason you hire, part of the reason directors constantly work with the same people is there's a chemistry there. Yeah, of course. So what, they're not supposed to go back to the people they work the best with just because one side was Marvel and the other side was DC? Like, I mean, Christopher Nolan has the same five people. And every, Killian Murphy's been in every movie. Michael Caine is every movie. Christian Bale did like four movies with it. Like, it's not an accident, people, that this happens. So, yeah. yes, I, I if we're building a 10-year universe, I'd be pretty surprised if one or more of the Guardians characters didn't make it into the DCU in some in some capacity. I don't have a problem with it at all. Um, and it it won't be the last time either. Like whether it was James Gunn or not, this is inevitable. Yeah. This is gonna have this crossover is gonna I mean the weird thing to me is the same people that are saying don't bring the Guardians to the DCU are like the same people that like the second Henry Cavill was let out of his Superman contract. We're like, all right, here's the <laughs> well, How is it any different? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. People, uh, it's, it's it's sometimes it, it's hard to have logical conversations, but um, so that's happening with James Gunn. What, anything else before we move on to uh, Jason Momoa? No, I think that's been the that's been the main thing. I mean, Gunn has actually gone a little bit quieter in terms of you know he has he was dropping the Superman content and stuff like that. He's been you know, I, like I said, I think at this point he's probably, I would guess they're ready, and it's more a company level. How are we going to do this? How are we going to sync it up? How do we want to present it to the fans exactly? Timing. So again, like by the time our show comes out, we will have crossed into February. So even if we haven't seen it in January 30th, 31st, like I said, I, I think it's probably linked to the corporate earnings. It's not linked to anything James Gunn is doing or not doing, even though and, the fans will clearly see it that way. And when is this? It looked like the Warner Brothers earnings call was maybe targeted for like the first or second week of February. Okay. So that's why I've been sort of theorizing that they would want to have some of the content be on the call and then that would green light James Gunn to kind of let the world know in his fan friendly way what that's going to look like but I, I just tend to think they're going to be a little bit uh a little bit more linked than people casually following might realize yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about uh how james gunn is doing because quite honestly man i think he's doing a, a hell of a job in not a letting again letting things linger letting these specific themes get bigger and he's just uh how do you say uh um um putting out the fire you know and 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 letting people know like you talk all you want but this is what's happening there's nothing more to say after that but to see what else he does next. I am not, you are, I think, one step above me in the, on the optimism meter. Um, I think we're both in the camp of, we're both in camp hope here, like there's hope. But I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of TV, like, you know, I think you, for you to use the Thanos turn analogy is, is strong, that's strong language, right? That's one of the phenomenal moments of this genre, right? I, I think I need to feel and see some of the content of this of reveal course. to feel like that versus i guess if i'm drawing other analogies that ended more poorly like that moment in matrix revolutions where the ship kind of pokes out above the clouds and then immediately descends into darkness and trinity dies like ah. that like i you know 
Like, I got I, it could be that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, depending on how this goes. So, but yeah, this is the most this is the most hope that I think DC's had in a while. And as we said, you know, we'll we'll, we'll talk about our Marvel content. There, from an excitement level, I think there's a case to be made to take a flyer on the upside of DC right now relative to what Marvel seems to be heading toward. Now, Marvel can change its fortunes too, but you know they they are certainly maybe a notch down from where they were. And DC's got a clean slate. Brian, the re the reason why I I I, I, I mentioned the, the the similarities in feeling and excitement, and when I mentioned Thanos and what's going on now with DC, uh, is that James Gunn understands where Superman is, and the DC world is. It has to be nothing less than stellar, Brian. Can't be nothing else than that. And he understands that. And I think I am expecting uh, greatness. And in, 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 because if we don't get it, Brian, then who knows? Perhaps, perhaps not in our lifetime, we'll see a DC universe that's uh, as successful as the MCU. This is the, this is the first this is the first and only chance uh james gunn is gonna have at this uh and he can't mess it up and he knows that and that's why you know he's doing what he has to do to put out fires and and i guess have people kill that expectation and the speculation and all this and stuff and just letting people know that all you don't know anything what i'm gonna reveal to you is going to be hopefully brian uh i think well received and he understands what this needs to be brian there's just no if ands or buts about it this is the chance if not like i said before saslov is going to sell dc in five years let's see let's see um in another piece of news jason Moore was you know ran out of a the warner brother lot <laughs> screaming <laughs> uh, uh, out of excitement for what could possibly be a role as playing lobo we don't know he says he says something about i think that aquaman after this one is, is is over i would suspect that if he was told the plan was hey we're going to put Aquaman on the shelf after this movie. There won't be like there won't be another Aquaman for a while, meaning you're still Aquaman in the sense that there's not anyone taking the Arthur Curry role. I'm guessing that if they told him Lobo was the plan, they would have told him a bit of a roadmap for how they envision the character fitting in not just to its own film, but into the universe. Lobo's, you know, Lobo headline movie with Jason Momoa, easy win. Where do you think Lobo properly slots into the connected narrative? Certainly in a Superman flick, or even in a Justice League flick, a, a, a big Justice League film, he certainly fits um, anything Superman. Um, I think there was there was one uh, animated. Uh, episode where lobo lobo was uh given a bounty to capture superman wasn't it something like that brian true and that's why i asked the question do you think there's any chance that jason momoa lobo is actually in the james gunn superman script is that a left turn that james gunn could pull off that we're not considering it is quite interesting and why I like it, Brian, because it, uh, I would say it gives the possibility of stretching out a Brainiac storyline. That's why I find it exciting and I think that it is perhaps what James Gunn is, is is planning. So I, it crossed my mind 
it, on the one hand, what 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 made me think of it was like Lobo is a character that I feel like James Gunn should be able to write incredibly well. Yeah. And so part of me was wondering, would he would he go go for it in the stance of, hey, if I'm going to put my Superman stamp out there, I also want to be able to lean on a villain, a foil something on the other side that I am confident I can deliver, maybe even more so than a great Lex or a great Raniac. My concern, there's a little bit of Jason Momoa as Lobo to me might overshadow Clark Kent, depending on who you cast. That would be my only pushback is that Momoa is such a charismatic guy in that capacity you and a might big walk guy. out of that movie. You might walk out of that movie being, "I just saw a great Lobo film with Superman in it," as opposed to a great Superman film with Lobo in it. And I don't know that that's what David Zaslav's vision of bringing Superman back to life would entail. I think Superman. I mean, I think James Gunn will be very careful in how he does all this. I, again. The stakes are high, and for James Gunn, this is, a, uh, I think, is a dream come true, uh, as it would be for you or I, Brian, if it were, we were in the same position, right? It's like, you got to be very careful in how you do things. You know, you have to look at, regardless of how well received Su Suicide Squad was, is it a, you know, do you picture a Superman film being like that? You know, no. you, you have to be very careful. That's what I'm saying, Brian. So that's why also he said, um, he's mentioned that rather, uh, Justice League Unlimited and, and, and Superman All-Star and, and some of these other storylines that gives me hope and giving us a Superman um, unlike we've ever seen, which is, I think, you have to do. You can't be... Christopher B for me is the bar, and for many is the bar, and for some others is Henry Cavill, so there's not much of a bar to overcome that. But I Superman, your Bryant, this is the this is the this is the, the the number one guy. He's been the number one guy, right? And but he's been whack. In my opinion, he's been whack. Yeah, but this my only I agree. My only counter to that, though, is if this for this movie to be executed perfectly, you have this is more you have to believe that what you see on the screen becomes the guy, because I don't think he's going to be the guy at this age and this stage of his career, which you could argue is easier or trickier, depending on how you want to set that up. So I think you want to see. A version of the character where you're like i can't like it's one of the things i like most about the patents and batman it's not a finished product if that's where he is two films from now i will be sorely disappointed yeah. but he's laid some groundwork to where i say i can't wait to see what robert pattinson is going to do with this character what matt reeves is going to do with bruce wayne over the next two films that's the like that's the feeling you want from clark I think in Superman in this movie. And that's where I do worry that if you're going to put Lobo in this movie as an outright, the villain, like the main antagonist to Clark, if you wanted to do something that kind of sets you up to then do Lobo solo and then bring it back around to have them go head to head at some point, that I think I'd be open to again as being a little different path than we've typically seen for superman and i'm open to see it done but I, I i just i'm mixed if it is if we get an announcement that like we've got a superman director we're casting our clark kent and oh by the way jason momoa is going to co-headline this movie as lobo like it's a big deal yeah. but i'd be a little bit worried about clark's development <sighs> yeah yeah, that is that is a concern, especially when you have someone like Jason Momoa that can really uh, take over a scene. Uh, especially when you have this Superman guy that you need to make look super, right? Because we said it. 
all the flying, all the special, the powers that he has, that's fine and dandy. But what makes him Superman? He's gonna have to do some super stuff. I will say though. If we're doing these parallels of like stock up, stock down, I would be a lot more excited to see what they can cook up for Jason Momoa Lobo than I am for Aaron Taylor Johnson Craven. And I, I just because because in theory, right, there's a little bit of similar DNA of that, like the bounty hunting, big game hunting character. But just when you think about the who's playing the part and the stewardship of it, I think the Momoa Lobo thing is a, could be a mega hit. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, Jason Momoa, Jason Momoa's um, announcement or, or, or kind of announcement about where he fits into the DC world. Um, he sounds very excited. If it's Lobo, we should all be very excited. I doubt he's going to be Aquaman, Brian, after Aquaman 2 comes out. It, again, I'll take that bet with anybody. Robert Meyer Burnett, I'm here for you. Thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. Because you said it on your show, you'll take that bet. Will you take that bet with me? I'll take that bet. It doesn't That's make a billion dollars. South of a billion. Dollars. South of a billion. Yes. Yeah, we're we're it's we're not going to make it a billion. I think the other reason Jason Momoa is is complete when it comes to Aquaman is we know he 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 wrote a treatment of this script, this story, which is all on him. <laughs> yeah. So like in in essence, if he were to hang it up after two movies. He kind of got the star flex as Aquaman in the sequel. He got he got the big payday. He got his he, he got his hand in the story and the content of the character. Like, so that's why I feel like he he's fine with like not having a third one of these and transitioning to another part. A lot to uh, uh, unpack in the next few weeks. Uh, hopefully, is some exciting news. I think, or I believe it will be. Uh, but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the DC world as it is right now and where it's going. Um, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Woo!